welcome our next Ted Light Talk speaker. A different ball game altogether. So this makes me question, is video production still a marathon even for seasoned designers? Uh, when we start working on any product, the first thing that we do is talk to our customers, right? Uh, but because of the agile nature of the project, we didn't really have the luxury like that. So what we did was we went on a different journey. We started doing our in-depth secondary research so we wanted to understand what people are talking about these applications, what are the pain points they have, and get some clarity on that. Other than this, we were also looking at uh, what are the non-design persona saying. When I'm talking about non-design persona, I'm talking about people who do not have skill set in using these kind of products. So we, because as I was saying, we didn't have uh, primary research uh, opportunity. So we created a small workshop within our organization and we brought in people who have previously not used these applications and, you know, start working on them. And we started noticing what kind of interactions they were having, what kind of expectation from the platform they were expecting and what kind of challenges and pain points they were having. So from both these exercises, there were a few things that were highlighting uh, overall, some of them being the design fatigue and then uh, saturation of thoughts because you're uh, repeatedly creating a lot of videos and for a long... Uh... <coughs> Sorry. Just to make a note, these are not offline videos. These are videos Bravo. which are similar in form yeah, of yeah, your yeah, link. Yeah, you know, so you click on a link, you get uh, your video on yeah, a link yeah, Ask the designer to create storyboards. And this continuous cycle of review, finalize, review, finalize, and we don't even see one version of the draft ready. And we know how many versions of draft is actually made for that final video to be picked up for production, right? So this is still a challenge. Let's quickly look at 
how we at Cisco are improving this whole uh, workflow. Uh, for this talk, I'm not going to deal into all the steps. I'm just going to focus on the storyboarding bit. Um, so yeah, let's see. Uh, instead of a person who's a non-design, you know, like your, even PMs or sales or marketing team, instead of them coming to a designer to a brief and give the brief, they can actually come to our product. So as a first step, you come to the application and the application asks a few information. One is a campaign name. Let's say for here, I will take an example of UX India. So the campaign name is UX India. Then there is the uh, description bit, which is a critical field here because this is your starting point of your video journey. Here you're putting down information on what you want from, basically whatever the marketing is giving you brief, the same you can input here. So let's take an example that we need a video creation to invite all the video attendees, I mean, sorry, invite all the attendees of UX India and give them an understanding of what kind of workshop they're attending, what is the schedule, or even a way to download their batches. You can also ask the platform for a style of video and also suggest ask them to suggest content or scene narrations. Once this is uh, given, on the next step, you will go and create the first draft of the storyboards. Initially, uh, what we're doing is we're trying to remove the whole blank plate or blank slate uh, ideology. So you do have some ideas to start from. So if you quickly look at these scenes, these scenes with the help of AI models, um, they're able to put down frame to frame on what the video will have. And also it's able to smartly insert variables which are personal information, like for here in our case, uh, registration details, or what kind of workshop you're doing. You can also sign up for workshops. And at the last, you can see a QR code that allows you to like scan and then you know, get your ID card even before you come here. So, and how we see is, Whenever first draft is made, it's never the final one, right? You can't take this and be like, okay, let me get a video done for this. You certainly need an editing on top of that. So easily you can edit each scene. So whatever you see on the scenes can be edited. And because we are using AI, this pipeline of information becomes much easier. So you can request the platform to suggest better content. You can also ask if it wants, you know, in terms of tone, you want a neutral sounding narration, you want an excitement in the narration, or even a formal looking one. Other than this, you can also build your own image. I've seen uh, people showing our presentation of how AI is using uh, image creation. It's the same principle that is used here. You can build, give a description, build an image, and then use it to replace the images that is provided by the AI. These I've used just for example, but in uh, actual products, these are much nicer looking. Um, so you can easily replace these pictures. What we're doing essentially is removing out multiple steps in the workflows, like your licensing. Even searching for media is itself a long time, right? Then your approvals, all of these are, and you spend a lot of time in just getting content. In the previous project that we were uh, working on, we spent two months in just finalizing what the narration should be. So this removes out a lot of time from this whole process. So just quickly looking at what is happening behind at the interface. So first layer is your user information that you're adding manually. Then comes your machine learning bit where the machine model is understanding what kind of context you have given for videos. And on top of that, it's able to understand your public information of the clients. You can also add in your information that gets added to the machine models. Then the final layer is your hyper-personalization. This is where we are adding, uh, you know, PII information. Like, your, like it comes to me, it'll say, hi, Rishita. Today your talk is this, this. So, you know, every person who gets the video is getting different information. So uh, where does designers sit here? Are they going to be away from the whole workflow because of these co-pilot features? No. Designers will really take up much higher role in terms of providing content strategy. Uh, when we ask AI for information, right, it can also give you a lot of information that the final viewer can feel intimidated about. So you as a designer 
needs to step out and figure out what kind of content strategy needs to be built up for your platform. Uh, another key thing is providing a design direction. Uh, video is nothing but storytelling, right? It's a mix of data, pictures, images, sound, and it's creating a story that the viewer can you know, take away from. So you as a designer needs to come up with a role where you can review these systems and see whether the whole scenes or the whole frames or the whole story is actually coming up to as a value for the viewer. Then other than this, there are platform things that a designer can play a major role in. So ultimately, when we are building this AI video studio, it doesn't have to be another complex uh, video editing tool, right? It has to be made in such a way that it's just easy. Like even our parents could sit and work and make videos. So like how other applications are now enhancing so to get to major audience, we as a designer need to step up for these. So other than this, we are also doing much more things, but because of the time frame, I, I will end here. And uh, if you have questions, please feel to connect with me. This is me. Thank you, guys.